In part one of this series titled Building a Scenario in PowerPoint, I'm going to discuss some practical strategies for using PowerPoint to create scenario-based e-learning content. You can then use this the scenario in your online course or your technology enhanced classroom. And so many of us have probably used PowerPoint as a uh, tool for giving lectures or giving presentations, but I would venture a guess that probably very few of us have used PowerPoint as an e-learning authoring tool. And so this tutorial and series will discuss some strategies that you can use to use PowerPoint as a e-learning authoring tool for creating scenario based content. And so to kind of frame our discussion of this I'm going to talk about some visual design elements of using PowerPoint. I'm also going to look at how you can organize the content in your scenario within the PowerPoint authoring environment. And third, I'm going to talk about how you can add multimedia content such as images, audio, and video to the uh, PowerPoint content to enhance the experience for your learners in the scenario. So to kind of get started, once you have your scenario outlined, um, I'm going to uh, open here a, an example template. And to kind of start talking about some of the visual aspects of the PowerPoint uh, template, um, I'd like to point out that there's a title in the top left, and there are certain elements there, such as problems, part two, part three, part four, that help organize the information and help the learner kind of know where they're at uh, within the scenario. And so the visual design aspect of things is very important. And one of the tools that PowerPoint offers that helps you ensure consistency in the visual design is using master slides. I'm in Microsoft PowerPoint 2010. To access the master slides, I can select view and then select master slide. Now master slides in PowerPoint are a very powerful tool because they, uh, whatever is, is the changes you make on this particular master slide automatically get updated throughout the scenario. And so if I wanted to change the name of the scenario I could retype and then that title would be updated throughout the entire scenario. Likewise I could also change the color scheme or the visual layout of, of the things on this slide. Now you'll want to use this for uh, screen elements that are going to be consistent throughout the entire scenario. If you're going to have uh, specific screen changes, we'll address that in the individual screens that we'll discuss in just a moment. So to exit out of the visual uh, of the master slide view, just select close master view. And now we're back in the main editing area of PowerPoint. So um, you'll notice in the template there are several visual elements that you can copy and, and reuse. Uh, there's a dialog box here. There's also buttons that we'll add interactivity to in part two of the series. Um, and there's also um, some visual cues such as check boxes and X's. So in this particular situation, I'm going to talk about maybe organizing some of the content that you have and placing it within PowerPoint. For the, for the scenario. So if I go here to the first slide, one of the things that we want to do right off the bat in the scenario is determine the problem. And so you can use this text area to uh, describe the problem and to present the situation for the learner. And this is important for them to, be to begin um, adjusting and actually interacting with the scenario, not just as text, but as a situation or as a problem that they need to solve. You may also want to add an image to uh, to enhance that, uh, or maybe a picture of the of the people that are involved. Remember, you're telling a story, and any way that you can tell that story, either visually or through multimedia, is also an important element. And we'll talk more about multimedia in just a moment. So. Once we have our content, we want to think of the slides in PowerPoint as screen states, not necessarily as a linear presentation. And so, for example, here, once we have the problem defined and we've, we've typed it out in the text area, the learner will select the continue button and they'll go to the next slide. Now, on the question slide, we may have the question stem or what would you do next, maybe and a series of answers and depending on what answer the um, learner chooses they'll get sent to maybe a different slide. So for example right now I have the feedback here on slide 3 and they're going to if they chose either answers 1 or answer 3 uh, they would get a uh, the correct answer. But if I maybe say I wanted to have them go to a different uh, screen if they answered incorrectly 
I could just select slide 3 and I'm going to right click and select duplicate. Now I have a duplicate version of that slide. But maybe I want to adjust some of the visual elements that happen when the learner gets an incorrect answer. So I'm going to go ahead and delete these things. I'm going to move this X kind of to the top right to indicate that the, uh, the answer was incorrect. And I could add some text uh, here to describe maybe why the student got the answer incorrect or some feedback. And so feedback is an important element in this scenario building as well because it allows them to build on what they have learned and make decisions. And so we could possibly either have the learner move on and proceed in the scenario or um, by selecting the continue button we may be able to send them back to the original question and have them get another chance at answering the question. So that's going to be kind of some of the decisions that you'll need to make as you go through the scenario. And as much planning uh, in terms of that that you can do ahead of time before working in PowerPoint, uh, the easier the, the development process will be. And so again, in terms of organizing, you'll want to think of the slides as content chunks instead of a linear presentation. So our content chunk in this example would start at slide 2 and it would run through slide 4. And that would be our chunk if we wanted to duplicate that entire series. Uh, we could uh, just duplicate that and we would have a complete copy of all three of those slides. Notice there now they are 5 through 7 and we have a duplicate of slides from 2 through 4. And this allows you to be able to to gain efficiency as well as reusing some of your screen layouts when developing a scenario. I'm going to undo that just uh, last thing to kind of uh, condense our, our information here. And finally I'm going to talk about adding multimedia to scenarios. And multimedia is an important element of helping scenarios feel real to learners. You'll notice here on this first slide I have an image in the background. And this kind of helps to set the environment of the, of the scenario. You'll also notice here on slide 5 I have kind of an office environment. So I, and this was just taken with a point and shoot camera, and so many of us have access to that on our cell phones or, or, a, or a camera that we can use. And just our, our office surrounding or ask some colleagues if we could borrow them to take pictures. Um, so we have a very powerful scenario building tool just through the use of cameras and visual imagery. Now, if I wanted to reuse this maybe in another slide, so let's say on slide 2, uh, I'm going to select this image and do a control C, that's copy, and then I'm going to go up to slide 2 and I'm just going to do a control V, and I, again I'm on a Windows based computer, and notice that it's copied at the the front of the, the screen. To get that into the background, I need to go here send to back, or in this case I'm going to do send backwards, and I'm going to do that until it arranges on the screen the way I want to. And this looks good because I have my question in front, I have the environment in back, and then I have the background in the very back of the screen. And so just through a few clicks I was able to move that environment. And now instead of just a blank screen, now the learner perceives them to be sitting at a desk and they're interacting with and making decisions that are important to that scenario. So this can also be accomplished through the use of video. You can add audio into scenarios. Um, all these can be done in the Insert tab in PowerPoint, and you have a variety of options that you can then uh, add and, and really enhance the scenario. So be creative. Be able to uh, take the, the learner from just a very abstract text-based environment to a more concrete uh, imagery-rich uh, uh, environment and video-rich environment where they can uh, interact at a more real level and this scenario seems more real. So what we're really going for here is to make that scenario feel more like a game rather than just a series of slides or series of, of text or a document or something of that nature. So in this, in part one of this uh, series uh, titled Building a Scenario in PowerPoint, I've discussed some, some strategies to get you started uh, to create your, your PowerPoint uh, scenario. You start with that template and be able to modify and adjust things from there. 
Um, in part two of the, the series titled Adding Interactivity, I'm going to show you how to take these slides and then get people interacting and uh, adding branching within the, uh, the, the questions and moving between slides and be able to create this into a very interactive environment instead of just a, a static or next, next, next type, uh, type interaction.